welcome to the 600k ride, the final ride in the series I'm doing to achieve super randonneur status. So for those of you who aren't following along um, with my journey so far, what I'm trying to achieve is an ODAX uh, award called Super Randonneur, and you achieve it by riding a 200k ride, 300k ride, 400k ride, and a 600k ride in one season. And the season starts at, at October and ends in September. So this ride it has been uh, a bit different than the other rides I've done. The other rides I've done have been cal calendar events. So events in the calendar, you sign up, you register, you ride it with a bunch of other people, um, it's an event. This ride, the 600, I did as a do-it-yourself ride. So doing your first do-it-yourself as your 600 ride is probably um, a big ask, but there are a few reasons I did it this way. Um, I wanted to do the 600 in the summer, and the only ride um, was in September when I'm in Canada, so I wasn't here to do that event. So I chose to plan my own event. Uh, so what you do is you submit your uh, checkpoints, your route, and you pick a date and off you go. So there are a few reasons strategy-wise why, why I chose this as my 600k ride strategy. Uh, one was I could pick a route that suited me and what I was trained to, and right now I'm not really trained to do a lot of climbing, so I could choose a flat route. I could also choose a point A to point B route, and I find that more satisfying than a loop. You know, if I'm going to ride 600k, I think mentally for me that was going to be um, just more fun to go from point A to point B, not end up back where I started. So that was another side of the strategy. Um, the other side was to um, try to use the, the wind to our favor, so choosing the direction we did, we were hoping the winds would be normal and we would get a little boost from a tailwind, at least not to have to fight headwinds. All of those reasons were why I chose to do it yourself. I could use those strategies and into my favor and hopefully succeed. It meant we had to book ferries and trains and such to get us to the start, so we took the uh, ferry, as you can see, and we uh, started in Cannes in France and we cycled our way to Brussels along the coast. So in that way, the wind is usually a southwest wind, um, and it was on the day we chose, and that was great because we were going northeast a lot of the time, and um, we didn't have to fight a headwind, and we got a boost from the tailwind. So uh, if you want to find out the things I would do differently, um, be sure to stay tuned for the next video where I'll talk through the things I would do differently, and I'll talk to the things that worked, and I'll show you the kit, so uh, be sure to subscribe for that video which will be coming up next. Come along for the ride, uh, see how we get on, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Well, not really. It's uh, 7 o'clock in the morning and we are in France at our starting point, which we mark as the Ibis. So uh, proof we're at the starting point. Nathan's ready. I'm ready. So uh, we're, we're going to go for it. We're going to enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey and uh, see what it brings. We're sleep on the ferry and now we're ready to go. Uh, forecast is really favourable at wind-wise, so we're um, really excited about that. And let's uh, hopefully get some good time, some good average speeds in today. Are you ready, Nathan? Yes. We're gonna get our super on Uh Yeah, we need to. We need to do it. Go. No more time wasting. So strange to be on the right. <laughs> On the ferry, not far, but we've just found a gas station and we're busting a gut, so uh, making the use of that. Um, but good weather, beautiful day, the roads are starting to get busier, um, but we are not going to starve. There's no end to bakeries um, along here and it's quite populated, so we're not worried about going hungry, um, but the roads are getting busier, so hopefully the drivers will behave. The bus drivers around here are not very impressive, um, so uh, hopefully that won't continue. Stop, our first checkpoint, Lahar. Uh, so 
been a bit slower than we'd hoped. We're about 75k in now, um, and it's just over three hours it's taken us. So, hoping to get out of the more populated areas and give get our speed, average speed up, hopefully. Um, but it's turned beautiful and sunny, so um, it's been so enjoyable. The scenery, it's just nice to have such a different, different scenery than we're used to. Um, so yeah, we're really enjoying the ride. Just need to get our speed up. in Dieppe right now. I just having a quick coffee, chocolate eclair, toilet break and go. So it's uh, almost 20 past five and we have another two hours to the next town, next checkpoint for us and uh, dinner hopefully. And then the last 100k before nap time. <laughs> so we're on schedule right now um, so that's good and the weather has been great. We've seen some amazing architecture and honestly um, you know there's some challenges being in a foreign country sort of but it's not hard riding here, and um, yeah, it's just nice to be somewhere different. It just, you know, it's just more entertaining, I guess. I don't know. It's just a beautiful ride, a beautiful day. We're enjoying every minute of it, and uh, hopefully we can avoid the rain tomorrow. Um, yeah, so it's a shame we can't stop and enjoy the beach and the views here a little bit more, but that is uh, what this is all about, keeping on track. So uh, we'll have to come back with the touring bikes next time. not Dieppe. That was somewhere else. 4k later, we are actually in Dieppe now. Um, so Nathan's getting a receipt. This is our checkpoint. Nathan had a garment issue, so we're having to collect receipts as backup um, for Nathan's submission for his Super Rondon Air status. But anyway, yeah, so now we're in Dieppe. Um, we got overly excited before and saw the Canadian flags. There are Canadian flags here too as well. Um, but yeah, um, we won't get to see much. The, the waterfront is over there. As you can see, it's much busier and noisier here, um, but the water's down there and all kinds of Canadian flags. Um, so yeah, perhaps uh, I'll be back one day to properly explore. Um, but yeah, today we're on a mission. The real Dieppe receipt. Mm -hmm. Nathan tells me it's really cool back there, but I'm not very good at turning around, so I'm gonna video it and show you. Nathan's gonna show you. Is it too late? You can't really see on the go, Good evening! It is half past eight. We are in Le Tre Port. Uh, another checkpoint for us and 100k to where we intend to have a little sleep. Um, so as far as how things are going now, we're just about to run out of daylight. It has started to rain, uh, but it is sorry, but it is still warm. Um, we just had dinner, so hopefully we'll be energized again a bit, wash the salt off our face. Um, I think we're both feeling pretty good after 200k though, so yeah, we just push on and get the last 100k of today done and um, have a good old rest. Um, bikes, let's see, my bike is doing well, lights are on now, ready for dark, and I have lost one of my gears, my top gear I've lost, uh, I think it happened on the ferry, I might have got banged. Uh, yeah, and Nathan's doing well, he's uh, ready to go, he's standing in the rain, so we shall get going before we get too wet and cold.
Good morning. So, um, it's just about 6.30. We are heading out um, for the last leg. We have 300k to Brussels. Um, it's uh, not such a nice morning. It's windy and it's rainy, but it's warm and the wind is in favourable directions. So hopefully it will push us along. We'll get good speed this morning. Uh, yeah, so we're pretty tired. We had, oh, about three hours sleep uh, last night. We got the literal last room in um, the town. It's a bank holiday weekend, we didn't realize that. So we showed up and all the hotels were full and we were trying to figure out where to go, train station, church, calling every hotel we could find in Google. Um, and luckily the woman at the hotel found a, a room for us. Uh, as we stood outside frantically searching for a place to stay, we were just hovering under their um, doorstep trying to keep dry and warm because um, it was actually literal gale force winds. <laughs> so we were pretty worried for a while there, but um, luckily we have this beautiful room at the Ibis Hotel. We ate all the breakfast and now we're going to get going. Dunkirk, 400k down. It has been a rough 400k though. We left at 7, it's 11.30 and we got rained on the entire morning. So we're damp, we're very damp. There's no dry clothes left. Um, I was just using the hand dryer in this uh, cafe to dry some things, some, my hat's a little bit drier. Uh, yeah, we're, we're wet. <laughs> uh, we're hoping it dries out this afternoon, but Luckily it's not too cold. Hopefully it gets a little warmer though. Um, so I think we're feeling pretty good, but you know, the rain is obviously making it harder and dampening spirits. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's, it's I have not, not a lot of footage to show you because it's been just wet and dreary and well, the cameras don't like it. Um, so, yep, 400K down, 200 to go. is trying to come out but it is still raining <laughs> it's so wet um so yeah we're about a 440k uh, i think lunch will be um our next stop shortly as soon as we find somewhere that we can get in and out quick and yeah so our bikes are in a bit of a state um mess um and a lot of taking things in and out of bags so I need to neaten up my pack but definitely waterproof uh yep <laughs> The poor things. Um, Nathan's got uh, a can of Pringles on the top of his right now. Uh, but yeah, the bikes are filthy. Ugh. Anyway, dirty bikes, dirty bikes. But we're feeling all right. Um, glad that the rain has let up and it's warming up and there's the potential of sun. That definitely helps and uh, can't really complain because we've had somewhat of a tailwind. Um, I think if we also had a headwind on top of all of this, we would be like in tears. <laughs> Um, yeah, so continuing on, we're in Belgium and uh, lots of lovely bike paths here, so we're really uh, liking that. Hello from Blankenburg. So uh, we are almost 500k in, not quite, say 480 or something. And we're at a checkpoint, we're having lunch, although it's very late for lunch. Um, but we got rained on until about 2 o'clock today. So we're just very happy that the rain has stopped and it's dry and we're getting food. Um, yeah getting through getting through but uh, an update Nathan has lost his um, big gear on the front his um, large ring and I'm having an Achilles tendon problem so it's getting harder by the minute
One Hyundai left. One Hyundai. So flat. So flat. How flat, Nathan? Flat. 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 We did it! We didn't record because it started to rain when we got to the EU Commission, which is our finishing point. And, um, yeah, so we took our selfie and uh, got to the hotel room, which is about 2k away. ASAP, we're now in a lovely, lovely room. Got my feet up in this very comfy chair, which I think I'll be spending all of tomorrow in. Um, and we're very much looking forward to a big, big breakfast and a lay-in tomorrow. Um, so yeah, we uh, finished with our usual hour and a bit to spare, and uh, yeah, we did all right, um, and then obviously the last, it's always the last 20k, <laughs> are really brutal, um, but yeah, we got there in the end, and uh, live to tell the tale. That will be my one and only 600 though, I can tell you. <laughs> um, so hopefully you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. At the end of this ride, I don't have any video. There's a couple of reasons for that. Um, this ride is hard. It's I'm not, you know, I'm not going to gloss over it. We worked hard. It was exhausting. We were on very little sleep, although the three hour sleep was enough that the lack of sleep wasn't the biggest thing I was fighting. Um, towards the end, I was a bit concerned about Nathan. Um, he was struggling more than I was, which is unusual. Um, he did have a cold the week before we left, a really bad one. He even took a day off work. So we were a bit concerned even how how he was going to be health-wise to ride in this ride. Luckily, the day of the ride, he, he woke up feeling fine, but I think towards the end, he realized he, he wasn't running on 100%. And he was, I, I think, potentially maybe hadn't eaten enough either. I was okay, but obviously he needs more food than I do. He's bigger. Um, so I think perhaps... He could have eaten more, but I really think the cold got to him towards the end, um, just not being 100%. So I was keeping an eye on him. It was dark, so the footage isn't very good anyway. Um, and then when we were coming into Brussels, obviously, although it was, the, it was oh gosh, what was it? Around 1.30 a.m., 1, 1.30. Um, so it was great traffic-wise coming into town, but, you know, there's a lot of roundabouts and navigation going on, so we were focused on that. Um, unfortunately, the video became secondary at that point, and my gar um, my GoPro was no longer attached to my handlebars because I had uh, the screw come loose and I lost it. So there were some technical difficulties coming into play. There's, you know, the challenge itself. Um, and then when we got to the end, the end was the EU Commission. Um, and... We got there and it started to rain. <laughs> really, we had been wet so much that day. We just, we just wanted to get to the hotel. We wanted to get a hot shower. We just needed, we just needed that. And Nathan in particular just wanted to get to the hotel, which was about two k away. Um, yeah. So as you can understand, it was a hard ride. We were happy to be at the end, but it's not like the end of a normal ride where we were like super static. It's a bit of a, we did it. Let's get to bed. <laughs> kind of feeling. So another factor I was dealing with, from about the point where we had about 250k left, I had um, a problem with my Achilles tendon and it was excruciating um, after a while, like every pedal stroke hurt, every time I had to stop and start it was a very slow getting back up to speed because I couldn't put a huge amount of pressure on my left foot because it would just, it would, it hurt so bad when I put the foot down to start off and to push off that it made me nauseous. So every time we had to stop and start, it was just unbearable. Once I got you know, to speed, I could pedal through it and that was fine. So every time we had to stop, I just wanted to cry. Um, so yeah, that last 250K was a bit excruciating for that reason. Um, but in reality, as far as like the body and the muscles and being alert, I felt pretty good. So if I didn't have that Achilles tendon problem, um, I was feeling pretty strong otherwise. Like I said earlier, I'll be doing a video on the things I would do differently, the things that worked, I'll show you the kit we used, um, and answer any questions. I've already got some questions from Twitter, so yeah, put some questions below and I'll throw those in for the video. I'll be doing that one next. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to know more about uh, how we got through the 600k.